Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today I'm going to be talking about microphones. More specifically, the electric microphone. And now you can use that type of microphone to interface with your computer to get higher quality sound in the built-in desktop mic. I will also be explaining how these little electric microphones work. Now you may notice a change in scenery, and this is because I'm currently in Utah visiting family, and this is my grandpa's workbench, but I brought some of my stuff. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so this is an electric microphone, and this is kind of what it looks like. It's really small, and it's pretty light. I also have a whole bunch of other ones. I got all these electric microphones from LCSC Components. So thank you for them for giving me all these things. Now let's learn how these things work. So right here we have two little terminals right here. And one, as you notice, has connected to the shield. We have these little copper trace lines. So that must mean this one is ground because it's grounded and this one is positive. Now there's many different types of microphones, but electric microphones are really the most common. So there's the dynamic microphone. And pretty much what that is, is it's a speaker. We have a coil of wire right here, and that coil of wire has this magnet that goes through it. Now this magnet is attached to something called a diaphragm, and a diaphragm is basically a flexible piece of material with something in the center of it. And when sound waves hit, and sound waves kind of look like this, they cause the diaphragm to move back and forth. And that generates a little current inside that coil, which causes uh, a sine wave to be outputted electrically on this coil. Now these dynamic microphones are relatively good, but um, they're very big and a little bit expensive to make, and they're just not very economical. Now there's another microphone called a condenser microphone that is very similar to how a capacitor works. So it is pretty much a capacitor where one plate of the capacitor is on a diaphragm so it can move back and forth. So as sound hits it, the diaphragm moves back and forth according to the different sound applied to it. Now, how this works is we have one plate up here, one plate down here. One plate has a resistor going to something called a phantom power supply. And that phantom power supply is very high. It's probably like 48 volts. And we have one wire going to ground. Now, as these plates move farther and closer away from each other, that's going to change the current flowing through the capacitor, and that's going to change the output voltage on here. Now, the only issue with these condenser microphones is that they have to have this super high power phantom power supply. And that phantom power supply is very bulky, and that reduces the whole economical purpose of the condenser or electric microphone. Now that brings me to my final microphone that I'm going to be talking about, the electric microphone. And so the electric microphone has pretty much the same uh, concept as the condenser microphone, and then it has two capacitor plates, where one is the diaphragm. Now the only difference is the diaphragm capacitor plate is made out of a different material other than metal. It is made out of something called an electrode. Now an electrode is a material that has a charge on it already applied. Now this charge is going to be a very high charge and it's going to be built into the metal. So it's going to have uh, some extra electrons inside it so it has a charge. Now the formula for a capacitor is V equals Q over C, where Q is charge and C is capacitance. And so we're going to have this plate uh, being attached to another voltage source, but instead we're going to have it be attached to the resistor to only a five volt voltage source, which can be supplied by most things that an electric microphone will be inside. Now this plate will be charged with a uniform charge, and when the capacitance is uniform, there's going to be a certain voltage that's going to be across this capacitor. But as the capacitor changes, because the charge is still going to be uniform, the voltage at this point is going to change. And the only reason this is able to work better than the condenser microphone is that instead of having to have a phantom power supply of some ridiculously high voltage, we can have this electric material for the diaphragm, and that will have a charge that will be able to drive this microphone and make it work very well. And it works off pretty much the same principle with the resistor and the capacitor. And this will be able to create an audio output waveform when sound is applied to the diaphragm. Now in the case of this specific microphone, it's going to have these components inside it. We're going to have a singular JFET inside for a preamp stage, and then we're going to have the condenser right here. Now the full symbol for a condenser microphone is a circle with a little capacitor plate inside like this a line on the end for the diaphragm, 
and then two lines coming out of here. That is the symbol for this specific microphone. Now let's see how we could implement it into an audio circuit. This would be the most practical circuit for using this uh, microphone inside your electronics projects. You'd have a five volt signal on top and ground, and when you'd apply a sound wave to this microphone, you'd see uh, a sound wave on this point with a DC offset. And so if you had a zero point on an oscilloscope, and you had the sound up here, the sound would look like this. But we don't want that because that's not good. And so we put this DC blocking capacitor, and that moves this audio waveform down around the zero point. And so we have a nice looking audio waveform on there. Now, in the case of a computer, the graphics card actually integrates this resistor and this capacitor. So inside a computer, we're going to have a microphone out jack right here that's going to have three separate pins. One pin is going to go to ground, and that is going just to be the ground of the circuit. Another pin is going to have a bias voltage on it. So we're going to have five volts connected through something like a 2.2K resistor. And that is going to just to be like that. That is one pin. And the third connection, there is going to be a DC blocking capacitor and then just another bias resistor. And that goes into the computer. So we have these three points that are going to connect to our computer. Now, if we were able to take these two points and connect them together, we can see that that would form this point in the circuit. And we can connect these two points to the positive end of our electric microphone. And we can connect the ground to the ground end, and that would work. This can be confirmed by reading one of the signals on one of the pins coming out of the microphone jack and seeing that we have a 5 volt bias voltage on there. And so now we can connect this little plug to two points of our electric microphone and we can see that it does in fact function. Alright, let's solder this thing together. Fire up the soldering iron, full power. Let's take this cord, cut it off, and prepare it for soldering. There it is, the microphone is done. Now let's test how this sounds uh, against the other microphone in the computer. All right, so this is the sound quality from the little electric mic that we just made in this video. As you can see, it is relatively good sound quality. Now let's hear what the sound quality sounds like from the computer electric microphone. This is the sound quality from the computer electric microphone. As you can hear, the sound quality is nowhere near as good as the other electric mic that we just made. This is the sound quality from a studio quality dynamic microphone. As you can hear, this microphone trumps all the other microphones in the level of quality. As always, thank you for watching and thank you for LCSC for sponsoring this video by sending me some uh, electric microphones. And also, they sent me this cool circuit board which I'm going to be using in a, a future video to make an automated Christmas light control system. Thanks for watching. Also, stay tuned for my next video, which is going to be a collaboration with another cool YouTuber named Keystone Science. See you then.